today we're here in southern Germany and you might have noticed we've got a different bike today. This is the BMW K1600 GT. I'm going to be taking this through its paces over the next few days. It's got 160 horsepower, 180 newtons of torque and an inline six cylinder engine. So it should be a lot of fun. You might have noticed just behind me there is the Neuschwanstein Castle and we are here in Füssen where we're going to start our tour. We're going to head north up in the direction of Augsburg and we're going to take the romantic road. So join us as we take the K1600 on a tour of southern Germany. Okay, so we've done around, what, 200 kilometers on this bike already, Sean, to get here, but it's basically just been on motorways in the evening. So we really haven't had a chance to test it or even fall in love with it yet. Yeah, the first thing uh, I felt when we, we started up is how smooth this engine is, this inline six cylinder engine is fantastically smooth you uh, you don't even feel the gear changes i don't think you did either as some of you no, mentioned it's a very very smooth bike it's definitely not something that we're used to riding so i'm looking forward to having the next few days to really test it on all surfaces as we said we've been on the motorway with it and it's been good but these uh next few hundred kilometers through the through the forest black forest here in germany through some of these twisty roads we should really get its max potential we're on the B17 heading north in the direction of Augsburg. Uh, this is the Romantic Road, it's quite famous, and it's full of like idealistic little German towns on the way. Plenty of villages and places to stop by. We're going to stop off at a couple on the way as we go, and hopefully we can get a drink or maybe lunch there. It's actually a bank holiday today, so I'm not sure how much is going to be open, but hopefully we'll be able to at least get a hot drink or something because it's not entirely warm today it's uh no. it's mid-may and i expected it to be a lot warmer than this it's 16 degrees and there is a cold wind in the air yeah oh. i have my heated vest on it's still i'm still not brave enough to go on tour without it at the moment the weather is so changeable here in central europe but it's not letting us stop us is it no, it's actually dry, which we're very grateful for because it has done nothing but rain for the past uh, six weeks here. And that was our turn off there, so I'm just going to turn around and go back there because I was distracted with this camera <laughs> distracted talking. Distracted by the vlog. <laughs> the Deutsche Alpstraße. Oh, not romantic, so maybe it wasn't then. I thought it said romantic. Yeah, it did. Uh. You got it, Sean. Yeah. Has this uh, Straza made you feel romantic yet, Em? No. <laughs> Complain I don't take you to very romantic places, but you know, I've got a street named after here. <laughs> you don't get any credit for bringing me on a motorbike though with no top box. Oh, no, that's true. Uh, I didn't mention before, but the GT model of the K1600 doesn't come with the back box as standard. Um, there's another model which encompasses the comfort for the pillion, but I think the GT model might be aimed at more solo travellers. So M doesn't have a, her back box today, which is a little bit disgruntled about. A little bit being an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> However, the power delivery on this K1600 is so smooth that M's not going to fall off the back today, which is good. It's always a plus. These roads look like they're about to get awesome. Yeah, looks nice as we head into the forest. So what's your first thoughts then, Sean? Uh, this is the first six-cylinder motorcycle I've ever ridden. And what's taken me back is the amount of torque this has. I think it's 180 newton meters of torque. And it's absolutely incredible on this 1.6 litre engine. You can keep it in six gear and it still just drives forward. But if you want to overtake anything, you drop it down a few gears. It feels like an aircraft about to take off on the runway. It has this like, I don't know, this whooshing sound. It's so smooth. It is incredibly smooth. And the speed uh, just goes up before you even realize it. So it's, yeah, so far it's a really nice engine. A lot of fun as well. It's really quite bumpy, isn't it? It is quite a bumpy ride, yeah. We're not on the, the GS now. But the suspension setting is quite hard. We're on road mode at the moment. And we had it on dynamic before, and it was even more like aggressive on the bumps. But 
I guess is why it's handling so well on the corners. But I'm not sure if there's any other modes. We'll have to check it out when we stop. Because at the moment we've only got the three preset. Uh, I think you can have four or five preset. We're still riding on the Romantic Straza. You can follow the signpost for it. You don't need to put it in your GPS. It is a really well signposted road. And whether you do this uh, in a car or on a motorbike or in winter or in summer is a fantastic road. You really get to see Germany for what it is and what it was 20, 30 years ago and modern Germany as well through here. It's really cool. It is, yeah. It's quite often I was wondering if we were still on it, but as you said, the signposts are everywhere, which is a good reassurance that we're not getting lost here. <laughs> This it video is, is going to be so bumpy I'm like this. <laughs> it's quite bumpy. Isn't it? <laughs> I'll have to stand up on the peg soon. <laughs> They're so on GSs. Is everyone just by a GS. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As a, as a famous famous pillion rider, what's your opinion on the K1600 GT? Um, I think it's hard to say because I don't have the top box and for me having a top box as a pillion and a touring bike is extremely important. Like I can be okay with it if it's on a sports bike for a few hours but this is a touring machine so I'm not too comfortable without it. However, it's so smooth that you can be at 120, 130 and I'm not falling off the back. I don't feel a lot of resistance, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, As even under really hard acceleration, you're not being thrown back, are no, you? No, definitely not. And I've got no vibration through the pillion pegs either, which is also a really nice thing. Um, because some bikes I get a lot of vibration through the back pegs crossing a train track. Oof. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's not so comfortable on like bumps or anything, is it? No, it's really stiff on the on the bumps as well as the foot position for me is okay. But if you had bigger shoes, maybe we'll show you later later, but I don't have much room before I'm hitting the back of Sean's boot. No, and I, I'm riding well, my heel is pretty much on the foot pegs. If I move my foot back any further yeah i'm hitting the m's feet there which is not ideal we could do a little bit more space down there would be ideal it really would but overall it's a lot of fun it's a very smooth bike i think that's the only thing that i can say that i've not experienced before is just how smooth this machine is absolutely yeah and it is effortless it's like it pretty much doesn't matter which gear you're in it will pull away so it's uh, yeah you could leave it in six gear once you roll in and you wouldn't have to change very much. It's yeah. shaft driven as well, which makes it that little bit more smoother again. So all in all, a very comfortable bike. Yeah, and I imagine when you have the top box on it, <laughs> you're very comfortable as a pillion. But again, you just accelerated from what, 30 to 80? And I didn't move at all, and I'm not holding on at all, so. I think that the other thing that I would say about the K1600, the seat is a lot more comfortable than the GS, but it's not as comfortable as the RIT you know, sat on. I've also got the option of the heated seat on this one, and it takes a little bit longer to kick in because it's so um, thick and squishy, the cushion. But as you can see, I've got nothing behind me but the, um, the pad for where the top box normally goes and the panniers are either side. This bike is a lot less wide than the GS as well, so you do find lane splitting is a little bit easier, isn't it, Sean? Yeah, I think, because I'm not sure about the specification, but would you say it was about 20 centimeters? Yeah, ten, yeah 10 on a each side. a really big difference. It does. But the other thing that's really nice about this bike is the aesthetic of the cockpit area. I just flipped the camera around so you can see. It's got such a lovely um, cockpit, hasn't it? Yeah, it's got the built-in speakers as well. Uh, it's quite windy today, so we haven't got it on. Uh, you've got your sat-nav display up top there. You can put the map on as well, but I found that it drained the battery on my phone a lot. 
this model that we have doesn't have the phone charger on it um i think if you're gonna invest in this bike then it's definitely worth getting the built-in yeah. phone charger or at least having the usb port put somewhere because the moment we just have the 12 volt din socket which i can't charge my phone on the moment so yeah i'm not using the map to preserve my battery on the phone but the map does work and it works quite well and uh, what about the other little unique thing we found the windscreen sean you've got to show oh, everybody yeah, that the windscreen you know i got i don't have the energy these days to you know manually adjust the windscreen so i just press this little button here oh it comes a windscreen so cool <laughs> it's definitely not a necessity but it is a cool little feature they put <laughs> on there it's quite a, an effective windscreen it's all the way down it's quite windy on a day like today but from there right to the top it provides quite a bit of protection you see it keeps going and i can just about see over the top of it yeah i really like that feature because sometimes when you're on a really warm day and you want that breeze it's also got um flaps either side of the tft screen and the um speakers that you can pop out for even added ventilation so if yeah. you are in a hot country, it's got lots of uh, options for you to get the wind blasting through. Well, I'm not sure which way I'm going here. Okay. I'm just going to drive around this roundabout until I decide. <laughs> it's quite nice today. We've got all day to make our way up the romantic road. Nothing really planned along the way. And we've got, as ever, no hotels booked. I think um, it's this one. This one you're going with? I don't know. <laughs> I think this one said Europa straws, but... It doesn't matter. It's a one-way street, I think. Back on your favourite road surface, Sean, on the cobbles. <laughs> uh, yeah, just entering Schoengal, this little, little town here on the Romantic Road. It's all very quiet today because it's a bank holiday. What a lovely little place. There's not much open today no, at, not all, at all, is there? I think we're just pulling onto the main street now. All these lovely painted buildings in the pastel colours. Yeah, it's really typical of this area, isn't it? These colours. Oh. It looks so traditional, it's lovely. We've got the Rathaus here, which means uh, town hall in German. sweet isn't it? It's really sweet. So as we were riding around we spotted a vegan cafe which was making my heart happy so it was open. We've come in, ordered lunch and we're going to stop here for an hour or so and have a little break from the bike because it's getting very cold outside. It is, yeah. We're very fortunate to find this yeah. place because it's a bank holiday today so a lot of things are closed and yeah, we just coincidentally rode past this place. It was open. Yeah, so we've ordered some soup and a bowl with tofu as well so we're going to enjoy that now and just have a little bit of a break. And I think we need to book our hotel for the night because we're not sure, I'm, I'm not sure why we're staying. Yeah, it's still quite early in our moment so we'll head as far north as we can and then yeah, we'll see when we get closer there. Yeah. But I think we're going to pass through Augsburg next and then probably another hour or two further oh, north from not there. Not too bad then. Yeah. <laughs> Towards our final destination, riding through loads of little cute villages and very rural Germany, really. It's been quite a nice ride. It has, yeah. I'm not entirely sure that I'm going the right direction. Oh, there we go. There's been lots of uh, road closures, so we're having to follow the diversions. And as the, the TFT isn't displaying the map at the moment, it's hard to know which way to go. We've got another closed road here. I'm hoping okay. this way. I feel a bit like we're going around in circles quite a lot, but we're seeing a lot of nice towns in the process. Yeah, it feels like we're not getting anywhere fast today. It's fast approaching 5 p.m. I think we still have around two hours until our final destination for the evening. But it's been nice to enjoy the ride and really get to know the K1600, hasn't it? Yeah, it has, certainly has. It's quite a comfortable bike. Yeah, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still not happy about not having the top box. Um, no. For a but long I, day like today, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit of backache from the acceleration. 
Yeah, I certainly do think the GS is the comfier bike. Yeah, the seat cushion is a lot thicker on this, which is nice for the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I really miss the top box and I miss a little bit the height as well for my legs to stretch out. Yeah, it's um, there's less room than I thought there would be for me. Being it's such a long wheelbase bike, I thought we'd have plenty of room. But again, I have more room on the GS than I do on this one. So I don't think I'll be swapping anytime soon. No, but it is a really nice um, bike for these type of roads that we're on now in Germany. Nice sweeping bends and it really does corner nicely, I think, anyway. It does corner nicely. It's, a very, it's quite a relaxing ride when you want it to be. You can just keep it in top gear and just sit back. Yeah, before we were comparing it to like a Gulfstream or a Bombardier little aircraft as we're kind of used to these twin prop propeller planes that have got a bit more <laughs> oomph to them as it feels just like you're cruising on this all the time even when you're at 200 kilometers an hour it doesn't really feel like it yeah it is deceptively fast and, it really uh, is, yeah. yeah quite a, quite a classy ride it is yeah there is one good thing about not having the top box or the back box on is that i can have a lie down quite easily <laughs> on the back <laughs> It's a new feature, isn't it? A little sleeping where it's first class. You get a full recliner. Well, we are really close to a small town called Rothenburg, which is a, a walled little town. I've been here a long time ago, I think 10 years ago. But it's a place that Em and I wanted to come to visit together for a long time. We never got around to it. So hopefully today we're going to see Rothenburg and stay there, hopefully stay the night within the city walls. Is this the entrance here? I think so. I think you can drive down it. Doesn't say you can't. <laughs> Not too sure you can. No one's shouting at us yet. I know there's a road sign there, that's, 20, yeah, 20 kilometers cool an hour. Entrance. Look at this. Oh, wow, it's just as good as I remember it. Wow. Looks like we've um, just gone on to another movie set here. Like something straight out of um, Beauty and the Beast. arrived at the perfect time it seems very quiet like everyone's leaving yeah hopefully we'll have the place to ourselves in a few hours tonight and a few hours in the morning if we can get up early <laughs> we haven't booked a hotel yet so we're just gonna have a little ride through the city see if one takes our fancy oh wow cobbled streets perfectly painted houses what an awesome place So it's a fortified city. It is, yeah. There's the, the wall runs around the whole outside. You can walk around it, I think, on the top of the walls. That would be a nice thing to do this evening. Oh, that's a good idea. Stretch the legs a bit. I think we're about to <laughs> go out again. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh, he went down there. I didn't think we could. Maybe we need to pull over and try and find a hotel. Yeah, that's a good idea. Seems like there's loads of uh, restaurants here for us to find later. It does, isn't it? I think that's where we came in. All right. Look at this. an awesome entrance to a city. Absolutely spectacular, isn't it? It's a really safe place to live. So 
we pulled over, checked on hotel.com, booking.com, Expedia, Google, um, basically everything. And it seems like every hotel in this region is sold out or closed. We're just having a ride through the city again to see if we can see anything that is open or anywhere we can go in and ask. But it doesn't look very promising, does it, Sean? No, so far, all of the hotels look completely closed. I uh, thought they were sold out at first, but I don't even think they're open. No, oh, it's really strange, isn't it? Because it's, it's uh, end of May, nearly June. We're not that early on in the season. It should, they should be opening them by now. But the city itself here looks spectacular. It does. Looks like a little yeah. Disneyland set. So like I said, we've just been riding around a bit and we pulled over because there was a couple of hotels here. So Sean's gone in to ask them if they have any rooms, but I'm not sure if they do. To be honest, I've really had enough. Here he comes. Do we have a room? We do indeed. We do have a room. We are very fortunate. They have one room left for us and yeah, it's got breakfast. We've got a place for the bike. It's 130 euros, which okay. is okay for this region. Yeah. It's actually quite it's good. Not so and bad. includes a nice breakfast. Oh, I'm so relieved. So yeah, big relief. <laughs> <laughs> the quickest change ever i am sporting helmet hair this is our hotel room it was not too bad not too good 130 at night but we literally pulled up outside as you saw and booked it straight away we're gonna head out into the city now grab some food and have a little explore it's been 10 years since you've been here right at least 10 years at least yeah. 10 years all right so i'm not gonna ca uh, guarantee you as the tour man. as the tour guy no. <laughs> i was only here for like an evening last time just outside the city gates, we have a place called Landwehrbrau, which is a medieval brewery, but it's also a dedicated vegetarian restaurant. So hopefully we can eat here tonight. We are at a place called the Landwehrbrau here in- It's a um, former brewery, is it? It's still a brewery? I think it's still a brewery, yeah. So you've been testing out the beer. Yep, I've had the, the Hell beer, which is the light beer, which was very nice. And I moved on to the Kellner beer, because I thought it would come in a, like a, a, stone, a stein, a stein, a stone, stone glass, stone. but it didn't this time. And we've ordered some traditional German food, which is the Schwetzli. And this one is with planted chicken. So this is a vegetarian brewery, which is really cool and kind of unique for in this area of Germany. Absolutely, yeah. So we're going to tuck into this, maybe order a few more drinks, maybe some schnapps, and yeah, spend the evening here. Yeah, it's a really nice little town. We had a little walk around and it's, it's, yeah, a special it's place. really picturesque. It's, um, it's actually, I started to remember it a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> totally forgotten about it, to be honest. But it looks really beautiful. So tomorrow morning we'll be doing a little city tour and a walking tour of uh, the city here. Yeah, but uh, if you plan to come here, definitely book your hotel in yeah, advance. We definitely. were very fortunate that we managed to find a place tonight. Because yeah. there wasn't even anything within like a 20 kilometer radius. No, it was actually the first time maybe in six years of travel that we've had a moment of like, I don't yeah, think we're going to get a hotel Almost quite short. But uh, I popped into two or three hotels and just asked them and eventually yeah, one of them did have them. So if you find yourself in that situation, just maybe, maybe just go in and ask. Yeah. A few of them. So I'm starving, so I want to get into this. That's right. I want to get this. That was a really nice dinner. I needed that. I was getting hungry and the beer was super tasty in there as well. Yeah, we struck gold twice today on restaurants. Two vegetarian places here in Germany have both been spectacular food and great vibe in each. And now we are walking back to the hotel as the sun is setting and this place looks incredible. I'm oh, so excited really to explore does. tomorrow. Everything is painted beautifully. It's super clean here and I think people are starting to clear out as well. But we're going to head back to the hotel now. <laughs> uh, maybe get an early night, maybe have another drink yeah. at the um, hotel because tomorrow we want to get up early and take some photos and explore this town. Yeah, so we'll see you guys in the next vlog where we will be showing you around this little city. Yeah, it'll be a little city tour of Rothenburg.